UNICEF Inclusive Communication Module. UNICEF Disability Unit logo. A cartoon of four children with and without disabilities. Hi, my name is Chris, and I'd like to welcome you to the UNICEF Inclusive Communications Module. This module is designed to help UNICEF staff and partners, especially communication specialists, involve children with disabilities in communications and promote their rights. Paloma Escudero, Director of Communications, UNICEF. We have to make sure that we are fully inclusive in the content of our communication materials, but also in the format. Every time we reach with our communication messages, our materials to donors, to corporates, to people in the street, to the general media, we have to make sure that we are fully inclusive. And also, when it doesn't matter if what we are doing is advocating, fundraising, engaging or communicating, the inclusiveness of our approach to communication has to be a prominent part of it. It's something that can be quite an added value for us as an organization, but something that can really reflect in words what we totally believe as a moral and ethical mandate for UNICEF. The module is set out in three parts. You can choose to complete the parts one at a time or all at once. By the end of this module, you will know basic steps to promote positive, good practice, inclusive communication. Part one includes the following lessons. Lesson one, inclusive communication. Lesson two, respecting rights. Lesson three, terms and approaches. Lesson one, inclusive communication. Inclusive communication is about respecting rights and abilities. It should be a priority in your work. It means proactively and positively involving persons with disabilities. Lucy Meyer, 16, USA. She has a learning disability. I want all children with and without disabilities to be included in everything. Uh, it doesn't matter but they have a disability or not, we should always be included in everything. The choices we make in communication are important. Take, for instance, the way young children with disabilities are portrayed in stories that could either reinforce stigma and discrimination or change social norms. Inclusive communication is relevant to all UNICEF areas of work, everywhere. This includes child survival and early child development, nutrition, health, HIV, water and sanitation, child protection, social inclusion, education, gender equity, and humanitarian action. Inclusive communication is about diversity, it's about including boys and girls and men and women from different races, different ethnicities, different cultures and geographies, from different social and age groups, different sex and gender orientations, from large cities to small villages, and people with and without disabilities. This module focuses on disability inclusive communication, but the principles apply to all of UNICEF's work. I am just one of over a billion people with disabilities worldwide. Children and adults with disabilities are often subjects of communication, as well as audiences. Across the board, we need to make sure that people with disabilities aren't being excluded from our communication. UNICEF's equity agenda and communication for development approaches recognize that it is more effective when community members are engaged in the process of developing and sharing communication messages. Those community members should include children with and without disabilities. Oh. Emmanuel Ford, 11, USA. He is blind. You, you have to put us in everything you do because we want to be included, not excluded. Making all of our communication, development, and humanitarian programs inclusive is simply the right thing to do. It's about creating a UNICEF for the future, 
a UNICEF for all. There's no need to worry about making mistakes or being awkward. Nobody needs to be an expert. Just avoid making assumptions or thinking that it needs to be complicated. It doesn't always take longer or cost more to be inclusive. Throughout the module, think about how you can welcome diversity and include persons of all abilities across your communications, marketing, and media. When you understand and promote inclusion, you see diversity as an opportunity to make communication richer. A good way to do so is to engage with children and adults with disabilities. Stevie Wonder, United Nations Messengers of Peace. I really am going to and then begin to push this thing of join our world of inclusion. And I think the more people who are doing things that make a difference are part of this world of inclusion, the more we get people joining it, the smaller the world gets of people who are not committed. To sum up, let's aim for inclusion. And in doing so, let's respect people's rights. Lesson two, respecting rights. Children and adults with disabilities have rights directly related to communication. In the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, Article seven explains the rights and freedoms of children with disabilities. For example, the right to express views on an equal basis with other children. Article 9 is about accessibility and refers to physical accessibility, like that of roads, transportation and buildings, as well as the accessibility of information. Information should be accessible when it is transmitted through communication systems, such as the internet, and it is particularly important in emergencies. Article 21 is about freedom of expression and opinion, and access to information. It explains the right to access and share different forms of communication. For example, information in accessible formats, such as Braille or sign language. In line with the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child, children and youth with disabilities are making their voices heard, including through a campaign we launched online called One Minutes Junior. The One Minute Junior Barbados. Five girls having makeup applied to their faces. These are five friends. One of them has autism. Can you tell the difference? As someone who has lived with cerebral palsy for his whole life, I can tell you that disabilities aren't always visible but inclusion is always possible. Wen Phong An, 17, Vietnam. She uses a wheelchair. Another time, a guy came up to me and he was like, you, have you seen X-Men? And you're like a mutant because, you know, I think that your bones must have made, been made of um, crystal and they actually shine and look transparent and all that stuff. And have you ever like taken like x-ray or something like that? Can I see pictures or footages of your bones? Because I'm working on this science project of mutants and the evidence of mutants in real life. Negative attitudes, myths, and stereotypes about disabilities still exist in many societies. In some countries where UNICEF works, there are people who think that disabilities occur because someone might have done something bad in a previous life. As a result, Persons with disabilities aren't always treated with respect. Samali Lukabwe, 24, Uganda. She has albinism. Uh, people mainly think albino persons don't die. They instead disappear. They think albino persons are not human beings, that they are ghosts, and they are, that they are brought about by, as curses. When parents annoy the ancestral spirits, so as a result of punishment they get is giving birth to albino children. Through your communication, you have an important role to play in challenging these views and promoting rights.
the focus hasn't always been on rights. Traditionally, a charity approach to disability considered people with disabilities as individuals needing help or pity. This model still plays out in some societies. Humorous cartoons illustrate each model. Rolando Villamero Jr., 24 years old, Philippines. We have a friend named Cheryl. She has congenital deformity. She has one arm and she has one leg. Every time she goes around the city, she doesn't understand why people would stare at her and give her coins even if she's not asking for those coins. The medical model of disability has also commonly used terms which see impairments as something to be treated or fixed with the aim of making individuals with disabilities fit in. The medical model doesn't just impact health workers or approaches. It causes everyone to see an individual's disability as a deficiency, rather than focusing on their potential and abilities. Some countries are still taking a medical model approach focusing on prevention or using patronizing approaches. To avoid this, you should avoid terms which reinforce negative stereotypes and stigma. For instance, having cerebral palsy doesn't make me sick, doesn't make me a sufferer, and doesn't make me a victim. Through the rights-based model, we see disabilities as a part of human diversity. The Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities Article 1 Persons with disabilities include those who have long-term physical, mental, intellectual or sensory impairments, which, in interaction with various barriers, may hinder their full and effective participation in society on an equal basis with others. So disabilities aren't so much about a person's impairment as a lack of inclusion combined with the different barriers that are in place. A barrier to inclusion could be anything from a negative attitude to a flight of stairs. Gerald Oriel Jr., Secretary of State for the Integration of Persons with Disabilities, Haiti. If they are able to go to school, if they are able to uh, have access to education, like all children, and they can, they, they can excel as well. And they can be the fully active citizens that are able to contribute to the country's development as well. Without needing to become an expert, there are things you can do right now to make sure your communication respects rights and promotes inclusion. Mm -hmm. Lesson three, terms and approaches. What are the right terms and approaches to use in order to promote inclusion? Well, for starters, I like being called by my name, and I'm sure you do too. When you meet children and adults with disabilities, you should do the same. Besides that very obvious recommendation, UNICEF uses person-first language, which is the international standard and mentioned in the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. Putting persons first is easy. Simply refer to children or adults first and add the disability after. So instead of disabled children, put the child first to say children with disabilities. In French, enfants en situation d'handicap. In Spanish, niñas y niños con discapacidad. It takes a few more words, but it shows respect. Alex Guinness, student, USA. I use a wheelchair. I'm not confined to a wheelchair. When talking about children and adults with disabilities, prevention messages have generally used negative language. In prevention-focused programs, such as those about polio or road safety, you'll often find patronizing or emotive phrases like victims or vulnerable or dramatic negative music. All of these methods of communication can perpetuate stigma, even if they are well-intentioned. Barbara Kulaki, Communication for Development Specialist. I have been working with UNICEF on a range of disability-related issues since the 1980s. And one of the first was um, being involved with several country offices that were involved in 
polio eradication campaigns. And in those days, very well-meaning people were focusing on communication that was very expert-driven, top-down, and it was based on fear. So, for example, you had a child who was crawling on all fours on the ground who had polio, and the communication voiceover would be something like, unless you get your child to a clinic, your child will look like this. Or there was even shame-based communication. Some consultants and pioneering UNICEF staff really questioned this approach. People with disabilities guided them, and they became agents of change and spokespersons in communication. They were the ones taking their children, grandchildren, siblings to an immunization clinic. They were the ones who became community mobilizers, and they were the ones who, in fact, were even giving vaccines out in a community. So there really is a place for positive, inclusive communication in even prevention campaigns.